hey, hey, good morning and welcome. This is my LinkedIn live show. I call it Social Media Pie because I bring on inspiring people to inform and educate you. And today I have with me Mike Lenz. Hey, Mike, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful, Brenda. How are you doing? I am delightful. I'm looking forward to having a conversation today. We actually had a chat a few months back and um, had such a great conversation. I said, you know, this might make for a really interesting LinkedIn Live. So I'm looking forward to the chat today, Mike. Before we get started, though, what I'd like to do is welcome our audience. So for anyone watching, I would love it. See my ticker running below right now. If you guys could leave a comment and let us know that this live stream is picking up on LinkedIn. I did get a little notification in the background that it's live on LinkedIn, Mike, but I'm not seeing it playing yet. So I'm going to give folks just a second here, see if their comments are coming in. Oh, I see a, a LinkedIn user saying hi. So that must mean the stream is now going, Mike. That's a good sign. Uh, and, and you probably can appreciate, Mike, and we both have microphones within the view here. So it's kind of like in the pre-pandemic days, I would tap the microphone and say, is this thing on? Can you guys hear me? <laughs> it's kind of like what we did in the um, the pre-show. We were testing our microphones, making sure everything was well lit, videos were in position. Um, I want to make sure that we are on. So thank you, Tom. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Kenneth. Um, and, and I want to encourage folks as you're popping in, drop a comment into chat. Let us know where you're watching from. We'll do some Q&A a little bit later on today. So Mike, you and I met by way of, and I'm gonna try to figure out who it was, but mm -hmm. I was working on getting my audio book to the finish line. And I was, I was at this crossroads of, I don't know what to do next. I don't wanna do the wrong thing. So I started saying, I need like an audio book producer or coach or somebody to take me over. And I had a couple of names and yours was one of them. Um, we had a chat about things and, I, and you actually said, you know, Dave, the guy who I ended up working with, is probably better suited for what you're looking for. But we had such a great yep. conversation. I said, why don't we we come back and um, do a LinkedIn Live sometime? And you agreed. So, um, so Mike, for those people who don't know about you, could you take a few minutes? Tell us a little bit about you and your business. Yeah, first of all, it was great to meet you. It was very, It's nice to get those recommendations from our colleagues, you know, so somebody had referred me to you in the, in the comment section, as you mentioned, and it was nice to be able to connect with you because we had never met before. And we started talking, I think we talked for like an hour just about everything. So it was so much fun to meet you and get to chat. Um, so a little bit about my backstory. Um, I originally was a pharmacist for about 30 years. So I ran my own brick and mortar, mortar pharmacy that was in our family um, for, for uh, my father had run it prior to me, to me taking over back in the early 80s. Um, and I did that for, as I said, almost 30 years, but I also, did some other stuff. I ran for public office locally. So I served as finance commissioner and also mayor of my hometown of Saratoga Springs, New York. Very and cool. um, yeah, that, that was a really neat experience. A um, lot of pressure, you know, running a business and trying to run a city at the same time. But it was a great experience, a learning experience for me. But unfortunately, or fortunately, I lost um, a reelection uh, at some point, And I suddenly had some free time on my hands. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to start exploring my creative side because I'd always had that creative uh, part of me, but I hadn't really allowed it to come to the surface. So I started to explore screenwriting and joined a local filmmakers group and was really just loving it. And, and one of the meetings, somebody was there handing out flyers for a voiceover training company. And I thought, you know, one of the things I really missed about being mayor was using my voice to communicate. I love speaking to groups and on the radio and television, and I didn't really wanna run for public office again. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. I thought I can get trained to use my voice to communicate and uh, I could possibly get paid for it. I don't have to run for office, so I'm going to go try it. And as soon as I took my first lesson, I was hooked. And that began my journey into VO. And that was about uh, 15 years in the margins, 10 years in the margins, and then started my own podcast about eight years ago, started interviewing other voice actors um, and thought to myself, you know, I might be able to do this on a full time basis if I put my my mind to it and started to really devote more time and energy to it in the margins. And then about four years ago, <clears throat> sold my brick and mortar pharmacy and went into VO full time. And uh, and now I spend my days recording audiobooks, doing explainer videos, commercial work, um, corporate videos, and also podcast producing. I produce my own podcast and also consult with other 
other individuals and companies that want to produce their podcasts. So um, all wow. the pieces to the pie, as I know you'll appreciate that word. Love um, it. Yeah. Is important. <laughs> you'll, you'll get and, if you come on my show and you mention pie, you get bonus points with me. I don't know oh, what they nice. count for, so but glad. you get bonus points. So yeah, absolutely. I'm glad. I had to throw that in there somewhere. Um, but it's it's just been an amazing transition for me to be able to do this on a full-time basis because I have total control of my day. I bring my kids to school. I pick them up from school and um, right. just being able to have control of my day is, is really been so much fun and, and being able to be creative every day. I just love it. So I've had multiple careers and this is my latest and probably my last career path. That's awesome. And I have to ask a couple of questions about your introduction in there. Did you ever in a million years think you'd be doing what you're doing now? Like when you, you know, were, were back in your, your days of politics or even, you know, your pharmacy, did you ever think you'd be doing this voiceover business and the podcast full time? Did you ever imagine that? You know, I, n not really. I remember my wife calling me at the pharmacy sent when I got my first audio book and I was at the pharmacy thinking, you know, how am I ever going to get from where I am now to where I want to be? I couldn't really envision it. So I started, to, I had to kind of retrain my brain to think about asking what if questions instead of mm -hmm. just thinking about why I couldn't do it. I started thinking, what if I could do this on a full-time basis? What if I sold the pharmacy and moved into VO. What if I had enough clients that I could sustain myself doing something that I really, really love? And I liked owning a small business. I, I liked being a pharmacist, mm -hmm. but it wasn't fulfilling that creative side of me that that really was coming to the fore. So when I started asking those questions, by asking those questions, you start coming up with answers, right? Because you ask the question mm -hmm. and you answer the question and it kind of charts the path for you. But it was a leap of faith for sure. You know, I wasn't 100% certain that I was going to have the success that I've been fortunate enough to have. But um, yeah, there were definitely some moments in the past where I was like, I know I want to do this, but I'm just not sure how I'm going to make it happen. And fortunately, I was able to do that. I love it. And I think the what if questions, sometimes they challenge your brain. Yeah. Your brain starts to kind of like all the circuits start to go, yeah, what if we could do this? And what, what do we need to do to make it happen? Right. You need to prove it to yourself. I think there's something that's to be said, whether you believe in reading affirmations or not. But I think it's like shifting the way that you think about things. Um, and this is a really nice lead into our conversation here today, Mike, because we're going to be talking about making your dream career a reality at any yes. age. And there may be people watching this show, Mike, that are saying, to themselves, I can't make a career pivot. It happens to people like Mike and it happens to people like Brenda. It won't happen to me. What do you say to those people? Well, I'll, I always tell people wherever you are in your journey, I've probably been there because, you know, I remember having that same thought. You know, I would have friends of mine or colleagues that were farther along in the journey than I was, and I couldn't necessarily see the path forward. And at the same time, I understand what it's like to be in another job or be in a career where you have a lot of responsibility. So you're thinking, look, I, I have to pay attention to what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis in the job that I'm currently in. So there's only so much bandwidth that we have in any given day. So I really had to dive into, I, as I say, life in the margins. So for me, I knew that if I got up a little bit earlier in the morning, then I could record enough auditions or record enough audiobook chapters that I could go to my pharmacy job, come home, have dinner with my family, uh, put the kids to bed, and go back down to the studio, record more auditions, record more audiobooks, and uh, more audiobook chapters. And I did what I needed to do in the margins to grow my career as much as I could. And then when I got to the point where I said, look, I can, I've grown it as much as I can grow it with the time that I have, right? that was when kind of the, the, the crossroads happened. Then I had to say, okay, look, the only way you're going to continue to grow your career from, you know, it started as a side hustle to a part-time job. And now it was kind of busting a little bit at the seams. I had to make that decision. Like, are you going to, this is as far as you can go. And right. for me, you know, I own the business. So I was in a position where I could sell it and then move into another career. I know there's other people that work in a nine to five, they work for somebody and mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a different situation. Um, but at the same time, owning a small business might be even harder because there's a lot that goes into selling a business and the right. process that you have to go through. So um, it's not as easy as giving your two week notice and walking out the door, you know, so I had yeah. a lot of things I had to do. So, yeah, I mean, once I made that decision, once I got to that point and I said, look, 
um, what are you going to do? And I prayed about it. And uh, we have a good, a good family friend who's a, who's a priest and went to high school with my, my wife. And um, <clears throat> he would come in the pharmacy and I talked to him about it. And um, after much discussion, much prayer, much thought, said, mm-hmm. this is the time. If I'm, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it now. And, um, and I'm glad that I did because, you know, the old adage that what you pay attention to grows certainly mm-hmm. worked for me because the, all of a sudden having more time to devote to paying attention to the voiceover and not having the pharmacy that I had to focus on freed me up to really dive in. And fortunately, you know, the, the business has grown over the last four years. So that's amazing. It's been a great journey. You, know, you know what I love about hearing entrepreneurial stories, kind of um, many of us, it wasn't like we set out earlier in our career and said, one day I'm going to own my own business. I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to do the thing. It was, there's something that the universe nudged us forward, you know, and for you, it was, you know, you, you were in politics, you didn't, you didn't win the, the seat and you started looking at what else could you do? And you liked using your voice yeah. as a part of that, you know, for other people, it's other, it's other little inklings and other, you know, other people might double down on that and just keep trying to get back to that corporate job that they lost or to, to win that seat in politics and try different routes. And other people yeah. kind of say, you know what, there's a, there's a fork in the path. Now I can either try to go this direction or I can try to go that direction. And I think, Mike, for many people, I feel like it's easier to keep doing what you've always done, even if you weren't happy with it completely, even if you don't feel like deep in your heart of hearts, it's going to be a success, but this is what you're comfortable with versus the path less taken. And I think that's the role that that you've taken. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's that that is the hardest part is to overcome the inertia, which is carrying you down one path and saying, look, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of force myself to change paths. And, you know, there's a quote that I love that said, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive, because Mm -hmm. what the world really needs is more people who are truly alive. And I read that quote uh, when we were on vacation uh, about a year before I sold the pharmacy and that stuck with me. And I remember thinking, I like the pharmacy. I like being a small business owner. But when I get up in the morning, I don't feel alive. I don't feel that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I battled with that for many, many years uh, because it was a a successful career. You know, I was making a good living. I was part of our downtown community. We owned the building where our pharmacy was located. So I was not only a, a business owner, but a building owner and had served in local politics and city hall was right across the street from the pharmacy. So I was, I was firmly entrenched in this downtown business community. Mm -hmm. So there were many things that would compel me to stay. And had I not lost the election, um, I would have continued down the path of politics, probably as far as it would take me. I always equate politics to boxing. You know, Mm -hmm. you you never really get out on your own. You typically hang in there until somebody knocks you out. Knocks you out. And so, (laughs) And, and sometimes they come back, you know, and I and I probably could have come back. I probably could have won. Um, it was a really close election that I lost. And and but I my heart wasn't in it. You know, I had given 10 years of my life to it and I knew that the fire was not there in my belly. So sometimes. It's not so much the path becoming clear as the other paths, it becoming clear that the other paths aren't the right ones. And for Uh, me, politics got turned off. And I knew after I got out of the pressure cooker and looked at it objectively, I said, you know, this was going to kill me. You know, running a business, running a pharmacy. We have four children. We were building a new home. Mm -hmm. It was it was just sapping all of my energy. And I knew that I wasn't going to do that. So I could check that off. But then they're done that. I got to be mayor, had some great experiences. I'm not going to do that. So sometimes checking things off your list of things that you know you're not going to do anymore can help narrow, obviously, your choices. So then it came down Mm -hmm. to the pharmacy and and voiceover. And once I discovered voiceover, my only thought was this will be a fun hobby. I'm I'm not Mm going to get too crazy. I'm not going to get too excited about it. Yeah, it was just dabbling, right? You're like, oh, this is kind of nice. Let's let's, I'll try this for a bit. Yeah. Exactly. I'm, I'm just going to dabble. And mm-hmm. we kind of do we do that to ourselves, right? Because right. We're, we're afraid to fully commit. And that's OK. Mm-hmm. You know, and again, like I said earlier, every every path in the journey, I've probably been there because I know yeah. what it's like to, to, to say, I'm just going to do it as a side hustle. And, and the other th- interesting thing for me was when I made the transition, even in the margins, when I still own the pharmacy, um, I got my my CD demos made and I got my business cards made and 
it was a, it was really strange talking to people about it and handing out those cards because th there's there's three ways that we typically think of ourselves. So there's the person that we think we are, there's the person that other people think we are, and there's the person that we think other people think we are. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a lot of people hang out in that third category, including me. And mm -hmm. I thought, I'm going to start spending time in that first category. Who do I think I am? And really look inside myself and say, who are you? And what is that you, what do you want to do? But overcoming the perception that people had of me as former mayor, pharmacist, right. that's a completely different persona than voice actor, right? You wouldn't, you would never think to no, put those. No, that's not, it's not like a parallel, like either mayor or city council or Congress. Yeah. No, it's, it's a mayor or podcast audiobook producer like what's that you know or voiceover actor that's it's totally different yeah so, so different so i had to overcome even that inertia which was like people are going to think i'm crazy when i tell them right. that you know that i'm i'm a voice actor now but now if you flash you know flash forward 10 plus years mm -hmm. if you look me up on linkedin and social media i have to remind people that i used to be a pharmacist I have to remind people that I used to be in politics because what people see me as on social media is what I am now. And that is what I'm most comfortable being. Whereas before it was a side hustle. Now with this is who I am. That's what I used to do. But overcoming that initially, those, those self-imposed perceptions that we put on ourselves that right. people are going to think I'm crazy. People are going to think that's stupid. People are going to be laughing at me behind my back. I had to put all that aside and say, look, I really want to do this and I'm going to just go forward with it and see where it takes me. So, so I got to ask you those a question. Are hard. I got to ask you a question, Mike. So I, I yeah. hear, you know, that, you know, the people are going to think I'm crazy or people aren't going to understand this. Did you get people saying, Mike, are you crazy? What are you doing? I mean, did you have anybody asking those questions or was it just what you were perceiving them to be? It, well, it, it was mostly my perception in my head, no question about it, because most people, when I would told them what I was doing, were like, that sounds so cool. <laughs> you know, they were excited about it. Like, wow, I didn't I didn't even know that you could do that. And I'm like, well, you know, listen to the radio, listen to your television, ride in the elevator, turn on your computer. All those voices that you hear, they're all voice actors. And um, right. I hadn't really thought about it much before I went down this path, but it was mostly it was mostly self-imposed my thoughts mm -hmm. that I had. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are a few people that snickered or giggled, but the one person that didn't, and I, and I really have to give her so much credit, is is my wife because mm -hmm. you know, so many so many hours spent talking about it, um, mm -hmm. about considering, thinking about should I sell? I think I want to do this, and this isn't going to be easy, and there are risks, and right. it is a bit of a leap of faith. You know, if at any point she had said, I don't want you to do this, right? I want you to stay where you are. It's a stable job. You've got a good business. We need to provide for our family. Mm -hmm. But she never did. Not, not, yeah. when not, she always said, you know, look, if this is what you want to do, I will, I will support you. So mm -hmm. you need to have somebody like that, hopefully Supportive. in your life. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a wife or husband. It could be a friend. It could be anybody. But it always helps when you have somebody who's kind of in your corner saying, you know, I believe in you and and mm -hmm. she believed in me and still believes in me. And fortunately, it's worked out. But uh, but, yeah. you know, it's nice. It's nice that, that if I knew I had her in my corner, then I didn't really worry too much about what other people thought. You, you make me laugh because I was thinking about my own career transition back in the day from like leaving corporate, starting my business. And it was kind of like a similar. It was like a little side hustle, a little money on the side. And then I had, you know, the universe nudge me forward. My position was eliminated. And as I was looking for my next job, I was being approached by people. Hey, can you help me with LinkedIn? Hey, can you help me with social media? All these other things. And I started piecing it together. And similar to you, I was like, wait, there's a business here. And I started right. doing the business. I had already had the LLC from the side hustle. And I just stopped interviewing and interviewing in general. And one day my husband was like, hey, um, here's a job opportunity. And I'm like, well, I'm not interested. And he's like, well, you're looking for a job. I said, well, here's the thing. I actually have a job. It's Meller Marketing now. <laughs> and um, we joke because he's like, what do you mean? And I, I'm like, I didn't tell him. I didn't really have the conversation like that we were going to do this. But I'm like, <clears throat> I had some some money in savings. So I wasn't worried about, um, you know, upsetting the, the balance of our household finances. But I said, there's opportunity here and I'm going to do this. And we joke because he was questioning it, but not in a way that he didn't, you know, he'll say to this day, he's like, I didn't not, it wasn't, I didn't believe in you. I was just nervous. And I'm like, yeah, yeah so was I, but I was less nervous about trying it on my own 
than I was about going back into corporate and having that happen to me all over again. Talk to us about your feelings on that, Mike. You know, do yeah. you control your success as an entrepreneur? Or does that happen to you? What are your thoughts there? Yeah, and I remember you and I having that conversation when we talked. And mm -hmm. it it it's again, sometimes it's easier when the decisions are made for you than when right. you have to make those decisions for yourself. But um regardless, we still have to, you know, chart chart our path. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love having control of my day and it being a solopreneur uh, is not for everybody. I'll I'll put that caveat in there because you do have to change your mindset. You know, I knew <clears throat> every day when I was mayor and when I was running my pharmacy, I knew mm -hmm. where I was going to be every day. I had a right. really good sense of what I was going to be doing and the time frame in which I was going to be doing it. When I went full time, I really had to take control of my day because suddenly I could do whatever I wanted. Right. Nobody extent, was telling right? you customers weren't coming in asking for nope. their prescriptions to be filled. It was like, nope. you you got to fill the day the way that you need to fill it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So but I was excited by that. It's not for everybody, but I was ex really excited by that. And I I keep a journal uh, every day and it, it serves two purposes, not only for journaling, but also for just tracking my day. So in the beginning, I tracked everything, literally everything. And then I would have a little system in place where I would put a, a, a mark next to it if it was something that I was doing that was personal. Mm -hmm. If it was actually work, then I would put something, a symbol next to it, like a check like or a that. dash. And mm -hmm. then if it was marketing, if it was something that wasn't, I wasn't on the microphone recording, but mm -hmm. I was reaching out, I was making connections on LinkedIn, I was making cold calls, emails, that got another check. So I could, then I could quickly scan week by week, day by day, and see how much of my day was personal, how much was actual work, how much was marketing. And mm -hmm. that gave me a really good idea of how I was spending my time. So I had to really drill down in the beginning to keep myself on track and make sure I was devoting enough time and balance to the things that were important to me. Because at, at, at that moment in time, I suddenly was given this gift, which was you can create your day exactly the way you want to create it. So don't, don't, lose sight of the advantage that you now have because our we have four children right now age 23 down to age 11 so pretty widespread in terms of the ages and yeah. when my older kids were younger <clears throat> you know with politics and the business they didn't see dad a lot you know so that i didn't want that to happen to me where i got into a situation where i was down in the studio 14 hours a day and nobody saw me because i've got to make this 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 business model work I knew that I needed to have balance in my day and I wanted to make sure that I paid attention to that. Mm -hmm. So that's why that, that symbols really helped me make sure that I was spending family time, but also marketing my, my business and also spending time actually doing the work that clients needed me to do. So yeah. um, it was a definitely yeah. a big transition for me. Yeah. I got to ask a question and I see that you're in, it looks like you're in a studio now. Are you, do you work, is your studio at your home or do you have a facility where you go to do the work that you're doing? No, I'm right in my home. So I have a okay. I have a room in the basement that's devoted exclusively to recording. Okay. Um, so you see the foam behind me, all the the acoustic foam and the microphone. The, but the walls are double insulated, so they're mm -hmm. they're double sheetrocked, I should say, and there's soundproofing insulation in the walls, in the ceiling, okay. uh, carpeting on the floor. So really, did this is not how it looked in the beginning. But over I was going to say, like, did you years, buy a house that had all of this, or did you no, have to no, like? No, yeah. I mean, I mean how, my... <laughs> did, you, did you have to negotiate the space out of the basement, kid? You got to move your toys over. Dad yeah. starting this studio. <laughs> <clears throat> this was the perfect space at the right at the bottom of the stairs, which was not okay. being used by anybody other than we threw a bunch of junk here. So got it all out and renovated this and made it into my recording space. And um, I joke because the first five audiobooks that I recorded were my daughter's uh, three poster board duct taped to the wall with Walmart foam on the inside of it and the microphone <laughs> in front of it. Yeah. Looked a little bit different than the studio looks now, but I did my first five audiobooks with that. So it doesn't really matter what it looks like. It really more importantly matters what it sounds like. But right. over the years, I've improved um, mm -hmm. my tech and I've improved the, my surrounding space, which, um, you know, has, has obviously improved my, uh, the, the product that I produce. So yeah. yeah, it didn't always look like this, but it's a, it's a wonderful space. I, it's my happy place. It's definitely where I enjoy being. And, um, 
yeah, it's where it's where all the magic happens. <laughs> and, and I have to comment. So, um, so I want to tell our, share our, the story with our audience. So, when we first came into the interview today, I always, you know, I give people instructions. I always say, like, I want to make sure we're at the same distance to the camera, at the same height, so we're not like one person high, one person low. We check the audio, and then I kind of just, you know, I show them what we're going to look like in the tight view, and that's when we kind of, when I was zoomed in, I'm like, here's what we're going to look like in the tight view, and then here's what we're like in the wide view, and I'm like, Mike, your microphone's like right in the middle of the camera, it's like is can you move it and and we had this conversation yeah. and this is i mean part of the work that he does you know he does voiceover work and audiobook narration the microphone's really important and and you and i want i want you to share the response when i say can you move your microphone what did you tell me and why i think it's it's relevant to your business and i think it's important for people to hear this i said no way not doing it from <laughs> <laughs> not happening no well the uh, the microphone um it can, I can move it. It's on a boom arm, but I don't right. move it because I move myself because for me, the, posi the position of the microphone is really important in terms of where I am and, and how my voice sounds. So, you know, when I'm recording audiobooks from chapter to chapter, from day to day, if my microphone is moving all over the place, then it's going to affect the, the consistency of the work. Right. So mm -hmm. especially because I do long form, a lot of long form, mm -hmm. um, meaning audiobook work and e-learning work and um, and longer like audio course books that mm -hmm. it's important that my mic placement is consistent so that what how my voice sounds is consistent so i try really hard not to move the microphone and you know it's it's nice to have it as a prop because it is what i do so yeah. here it is this is my microphone that i use every day there you go and and, and i in comparison mike i mean i uh, i don't do an audiobook narration or voice or anything um you know what I, what I do is specialize in linkedin but i I moved my location today. I'm actually in my family room instead because I get I get kind of sick of looking at the same background all the time. Right. And I have the luxury of moving. Now, um, I don't have a lighting kit in front of me. I normally do, but I have um, two windows that are kind of in the distance and they're giving me um, good light. I can yep. tell that you have a light on you though, right? You've got yep, some type I of do. light, light source yeah, on you. I, I do because I, you know, because I have um, recently jumped into the TikTok world. Oh, and, you have? Um, what's your I TikTok? Have, yeah. We got to look you up. What tell, it's Mike, you know Lenz, Mike Lenz voice. Mike Lenz voice. Yeah, Mike, Mike Lenz, Lenz voice. voice. Okay. Um, I've got a massive following of, I think, I think 637 people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, growing every day. Uh, <laughs> but it's a start. You know, I started with zero. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. And and I, I really like the TikTok uh, platform. Just because. So, what's your what's your kind country. of approach on TikTok? Is it is it funny? Is it serious? Is it professional? No, it's ser the, it's serious. Are you dancing? You know, what are you doing? No dancing. You know? No dancing. No funny videos, except a couple of videos of my chickens, our chickens. But uh, but other than that, it's it's pretty. Uh, what I tried to do is I'm trying to. Uh, what I tried to do with everything that I do in terms of the podcast and the ebook that I wrote, is um, is just impart knowledge. You know, help people who mm -hmm. are not for, as far along as I, I am in my journey to yeah. to kind of help them along and and uh, for aspiring voice actors. So for me, it's um, I'm approaching TikTok and I'm just learning what works best and what I should be focusing on. But I'll see when I find interesting things from the books that I'm reading, I'll impart that knowledge to my audience or mm -hmm. I'll give them a tour of my studio or I'll talk to them about this podcast client that I just started working with. Or I, I just want to give them a peek behind the curtain into my world. And it's a little bit more of a, a personal approach on TikTok, obviously. And um, I love the, the the robustness of the video and the things you can do. I haven't really even scratched the surface. But I got the reason I bring that up is I got a ring light to allow me to do videos. And the one thing I noticed, and it, it doesn't really help me now because you've got I've got my glasses on and the and the computer screen is is glaring off my glasses. But when you're making TikTok videos, a little trick that I learned was I was having these circle of light right on my glasses. So I right. had to put the, the ring light above me and angle it down. And that eliminated that completely. So I was like, wow, I learned that. That's such a cool thing. That's brilliant. Um, and you shared it with us. And because yeah. you shared it with us, there's people watching this live and they're going to, you know, some people are going to tell their friends. And I mean, at the end, I'm going to uh, encourage people to share the video along, but there's little nuggets. And even when you were talking about the light reflecting in your glasses, I don't know about all of you, but I didn't really notice it until Mike just said it, right? Sorry, like sometimes I, I think, I think yeah. that um, we, we were more conscientious about things that we, you know, think, well, others are going to have this perception. Even like you in the beginning, Mike, you're like, before when we were doing the pre-show, you're like, is the light too bright? You know, maybe I should. I'm like, no, the lighting's perfect. Your actually, your lighting actually looks more warm. Um, mine's a little bit more 
ashy looking on here. I, I probably should have done it, but, but I wanted to keep this. And I, and I think I shared this with you, Mike. I never make mistakes. I have learning experiences. <laughs> yes. And I always like to share my learning experiences with the audience so that they can learn from us. And this is part of yeah. the reason, you know, I wanted to bring the microphone into the discussion. Now, for you, it's intentional. You have it in a position because it impacts the quality of, of the output that you're doing, the, the voiceover work, the narration. Other people like me, I mean, I'm um, I'm I'm not doing this as a business, the audio work and things like that. So I can position my microphone differently. We don't want to have a microphone in front of our face, right? While we're right, doing an right. interview, because then the focal point is going like people are like, why doesn't she move the microphone? And we get like hung up, like, why doesn't he move it? Or why doesn't yeah. she move it? That type of thing. Um, I want to start to pivot, Mike, into questions from our audience. And I want to invite people. You can see I've got a ticker running below. If you have a question for Mike, um, whether it's about his business or about making that pivot, and I am seeing some questions coming in there right now. We're going to go to those now. Or if you have a comment, if you want to add something to the conversation, if you want to know if Mike's chickens have names, anything like that, drop a comment and we'll <laughs> ask any questions you have today. They do. They do, by the way. Yes. <laughs> do they? So how many chickens do you have and what are their names? <sighs> we have... We have six chickens now. We had eight. We lost a couple of them to Aww. predators, sadly. But um, yeah, one of the girls' name is Floppy because when we first got her, her um, her comb on the top of their heads, those little red comb that the chickens have, um, mm -hmm. she got spooked one day and and she jumped up and and basically cut her comb and it and uh, and she's she survived. Obviously, she's okay. But uh, yeah. we panicked, of course, because we were new chicken owners. But her little comb flops over now, so her name is Floppy. Aww. Um, yeah. Uh, and then I think one is um, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Princess Leia. Nice. Um, because you know, Leia eggs. And uh, uh, well, well, I was just gonna say, are the egg laying chickens like you get fresh eggs every morning? Yeah, yeah. They're all they're all girls. They're all girls. We we're not allowed to have roosters in our in our inner district where we live. So okay. and we wouldn't want one anyway. Uh these are all uh egg laying chickens. They're all cold hardy because we're up in the northeast. Um yeah. we've got Blondie, she's a beautiful Americana Easter egger, and she's she's white, mm -hmm. white feathers, beautiful. Um, we have um uh, Cooper, um, and all the, the kids all named each of the chickens. Picked up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Petunia is another one. Um, and the other guy is, it's like midnight, I think, um, our son, cause he was a dark, she was darker feathered. Darker color. Um, and we have two, two breeds, Americanas, and I know this is off the subject, but Americanas are Easter eggers. So they lay either light blue or light green eggs, which is really? nice. Really? I didn't know coming. that. They're different colors, yep. yeah. And then, okay. and then the Buff Orpingtons, which are is, is a breed and the color is Buff, uh, they lay the brown eggs. But so we have three Buff Orpingtons. They're the older girls. And then the three younger girls are Americanas. And they all get along fine. And they crank out like four to five eggs a day for us. So we have lots of eggs to give to our neighbors and our family. Aww. It's kind of a cool, it's a fun little hobby to have because they're pets. They give you something, you know, they actually they give you food. So yeah. we love it. Oh, that's awesome. I love hearing the name. So thank you. And I bought us a little time to have some questions coming in here too. So I want to pull up the first Great. question and I want to um, set this up by um, reminding people, if you have a question and you feel a little nervous asking that question, do what Joey does. <clears throat> Say, I have fun. a friend who is wondering, <laughs> how do you manage it? <laughs> or, or my coworker and I were talking and they were wondering about, and you could, you know, kind of throw that out there as a question. That way it looks like you're asking on behalf of a friend, right? Exactly. And you're not asking for yourself. So Joey's asking, how do you manage the feelings of uncertainty in changing your path? What do you think, Mike? Yeah, I mean, they're real, you know, for me, it's my faith. I fell back on my faith and, and it, 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 I knew that after praying about it, that it was the, it was the right decision for me. And I remember saying to my wife, you know, um, if, if, if I get to the end of my days and I haven't done something other than what I'm doing right now. And again, I always throw in the caveat that I, I'm not saying that I didn't like what I did as a pharmacist, but I knew there was something else I wanted to do with my life and that, that I would be really mad at myself if I got to the end and thought, you know, you could have done that, Mike, and you didn't. It's a, there's a difference between I, you know, I wasn't able to for whatever reason, but if you had the opportunity and you didn't take it, Choice. that I yeah. would really regret that. And I didn't want to regret it. And, mm -hmm. um, and a friend and sadly, one of the partners in the pharmacy that I, that I owned, 
um, he had passed away prematurely. And that was really a big impetus for me to say, look, if I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this now because there's no guarantees. Yeah, and so that that's part of it. You know, you, 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 you have to realize that none of us really knows what the future is. And so, right. so there's always uncertainty. And you, you once you make the decision, uh, even though it's uncertain for me, it was like, look, I know I love doing this. Mm-hmm. And that's never got guaranteed to just because you love it, you're going to have success at it. But it right. definitely fuels you and it motivates you more than doing something that you don't love. And, and, and right. I think passionate is kind of an overused word that, you know, mm-hmm. find something you're passionate about. But it goes back to what I said before. You know, if you could if what what you really need to do is it, the world really needs more people who are truly alive. And, and I knew that, that using my voice to communicate this way made me feel alive. It made me feel like I was yeah. using the gifts that God gave me the way that I was supposed to. And that really allowed me to overcome the uncertainty and the fear um, that I knew was there. You know, I acknowledged it and said, look, I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. I also tell people, and I've said this was advice that was given to me, is that you'll know when the, when the balance has shifted and it's yeah. time to go. Like, right. don't throw caution to the wind and say, I'm just quitting tomorrow. I'm going right. to go be a voice actor. I would right. never advise that. It took me a long time to build up my client base and the margins before I was comfortable moving mm-hmm. into a different career path. So, yeah. um, you know, you you have to have a certain amount of caution as you proceed. But once you find something that you're that you love to do, uh, I say go for it. Go for it. I love the point there, Mike. That at some point it becomes like you know it's not going to work out with the former job. Any, I mean, I've had a couple times in my career where I'm like, I've outgrown the company. Um, you know, yeah. they, there's just not a future path for me. And it's really hard, especially when you've been in a job that you love and you've had great bosses and managers, maybe they've left, but you're still there. Um, and you, you've reached that point where you're like, I can't give it up because I've invested so much into this role, this job, the team that I've grown up, but you kind of are at that, that point of making the pivot, um, related to this Kenneth Lang. Hey, Kenneth, um, as asking a hey, question, Kenneth. how much time or preparation do you need before you start your new career? What do you think, Mike? Yeah, I mean, for me, I mentioned it before, you know, I, it was a good 10 years before I was even in a position where I felt that it was something that I would consider. So for everybody, it's different. It just depends on what career path you're taking, right? But for me, I I was limited to the time that I could audition and build my career and do the work. So that affected how long it took me. But I, a lot of it was my mindset because when I started the podcast about eight years ago, that's when the light bulb went on for me. Because I was interviewing people that were farther along, further along in their career who were doing it full time, people that I admired and people that were friends and people that were colleagues. And I'm like, wait a minute, this Mm -hmm. this might be doable. And that's when I I I changed my perception, saying that don't think about the all the reasons why you wouldn't be able to do it or shouldn't do it. Start asking yourself, what if? And, And when I started to do that, I started to find answers. And that was that was the the pivot point for me and it's mm-hmm. obviously different for everybody um but the key is the key is are are you willing to do everything it takes mm-hmm. to make that new career a su- success and you got to remember yeah. you know uh, the, the the job that i had the the business that i had was a successful business right and you a lot didn't of times need to walk that, away this is not like you needed to figure out something yeah. else you could have kept going I right mean, that Mm-hmm. And and the woman that owns it now, you know, she came and she bought it. It was her dream to own a compound. We were a compounding only pharmacy at the time oh, that's and, great. and the nutritional, you know, we were doing nutritional consultations and, and it was yeah. her dream to have that. So that was her dream. And it felt oh. so good for me to be able to sell it to that's her nice. and, you know, and yeah. she still, and she's, you know, she is doing great. What's and the so name for of me, the business and what city is it in? So we can give a shout out to her. Yeah. It's, it's Mengus. It's M E N G E S and okay. Curtis. C-U-R-T-I-S, Apothecary. Um, and it's in Saratoga Springs, New York. Is and you can C-U-R-T-I-S? find her on social media. C-U-R-T-I-S? Yep, yep. Okay. Mangus and Curtis Apothecary. And Jennifer. And she's doing a great job. And that's and she's and so I was able to sell this to her and have her live her dream so that I could go live my dream career. And so it was a beautiful synergy. So it's sometimes it's harder to walk away from something that's successful, right? Because then it's it's sometimes, as I said, it's easier to have your decisions made for you to be to be, you know downsized out of a company. Oh, okay. Now I have to go do something else. For me, it was a little bit different and and somewhat more challenging, I guess, because it, it was successful in its own right. So 
That's awesome. So it was a nice segue to um, Danielle's question. Hey, Danielle, or actually Danielle's Danielle. comment here. One clear takeaway um, that she's picking up is for both of us, Mike, that we we had support. We had pe people who believed in us, but also that we both deeply believe in ourselves. Um, and she believes that's critical to success. Any thoughts you want to add on there? Yeah, because when she says when the going gets tough, we dig deep inside ourselves because the going is going to get tough. You know, you I'm sure you know this, Brenda, from what yep. you've done. And I know it from my experience. There are going to be days and nights where you're going, did I make the right decision? Boy, you know, is this is this the best path? Oh, boy. All right. And and so I don't want it to you know, I don't want to come across as, you know, I sold my pharmacy and I went to be a voice actor and now I'm doing great and Ooh, everything's wonderful. Success. And it was so easy, you know, just go buy a computer and a microphone and join me. It's, yeah. it's not, you know, it, it's, it's, it's cold emails and, and making yeah. those connection requests and reaching out to people and auditioning for hundreds of auditions before you book one and, and building relationships with colleagues and with people that can hire you. And mm -hmm. it, you know, I say that the majority of my time is not spent on the microphone. The right. majority of my time is spent off the microphone, marketing myself and connecting with people that will hire me. So mm -hmm. if you're not willing to to do that, if, if you don't love it, then you're not going to do it because mm -hmm. you're not going to be committed to doing what you have to do to be successful. Right. So she's absolutely right. When the going gets tough, we dig deep inside ourselves. And when you dig deep inside and you know in your core that this is what you really are meant to be doing, mm -hmm. it empowers you to keep moving forward. And that's okay. the key. And I've said that many times that the only thing that differentiates me from other people is that I am persistently consistent. I get up every mm -hmm. day and I go go at it because I love to do it. So I love it. So this is it's just it's funny how the questions are just really nicely layered and they're all like related and it's like oh this is a nice segue i mean intention not intentionally but it's it's working out really nicely you talked about being behind the microphone and this person it says linkedin user um it either it's either because you have your public your profile's not public your photo's not public it's either like semi-private or you have like the first level connections only or it might be in your third party application settings if i remember i'll um i'll add the blog in where i can give you the instructions for that but this person is dreaming of this transition you know m moving into their own business but they're asking about your microphone, Mike. So what microphone are you using? Are you able to share that with us? Oh, yeah, sure. This is a Lewitt 440 Pure. Uh, okay. So it's L-E-W-I-T-T, -T, Lewitt 440 Pure. It's a condenser microphone, meaning that it um, it's not a USB microphone, so it doesn't plug directly into my computer. I do have an interface, which basically connects your computer with your microphone. And in simple terms, it just makes your sound sound better. Um, it's it, so I, I use a Scarlett Focusrite 2i2 interface, okay. and this is Lewitt. And this was my put a shout out to my good friend Tim Tippetts, who is uh, my VO tech guru, and he has helped me. He helped me with all the treatment in my in my space, and also he suggested this computer or this microphone, and it's 269 bucks, believe it or not. Wonderful. And it's a top of the line computer, top of the line microphone, um, and very affordable. So yeah, and I get I see what they say in the question or in the comment coaching, demos, business development, all right. that stuff is so important. I, I have a VO course that I actually have that where I talk about these different, the different steps that you need to take. And um, coaching is is such a big part of it. You, you've got to, you've got to learn the industry because uh, it's not as simple as getting a microphone and a computer and just auditioning because it's so competitive now that if you're not getting coaching, I, I coach all the time with somebody. Mm -hmm. I always have a coach that I'm working with. And, yeah. you know, just like Serena Williams, one of the best tennis players in the world, she has yeah. a coach. So mm -hmm. we always need to be getting better and honing our craft. So coaching is really important. I'm glad they brought so that up. Do you remember, Mike, and I'm, I found our call notes. I cannot find the person who mentioned us. I referenced in my call notes, somebody tagged you in a post and I didn't mention the somebody. I still have to look that back up. I'll tag them in the comments here. But do you remember during our conversation, was it you who suggested that I change microphones for my audiobook? Does that sound familiar? Somebody um, said there's a better microphone to do audiobook recordings, and I can't remember. Who I think was. when you and I, I think when you and I talked, you had you were done. I think you I were was done. done. Okay, with your, so with your audio book. Okay, but yeah. I, I think whenever I see people with different equipment, I'm like, oh, what is that? Where'd you get that? Link? I mean, the great thing is nowadays, I think you can find this equipment so easily thanks to Amazon and you know all these different retailers. Yeah. You can order things online. I remember back in the day, you had to go to like these specialty stores to get camera equipment and things like that. And now we can find them like anywhere. So, if well, you, the other um, thing I, I want, I'm sorry, you go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I'll watch people do videos and um, 
and they're using a microphone that I'm familiar with, and they don't even have it positioned correctly. So they're they're actually talking yeah. into the wrong part of the microphone. And like, oh, it drives me crazy. Do you correct so them, a lot or of, a lot what do you do? Do you do you let them know? No, I mean sometimes, you know, sometimes I do, but I, I don't want to be that guy, you know. So but I'm I, I'm gonna be that guy or that gal right now, Mike, because you were talking <laughs> about your podcast earlier and what I and you were talking about you're on LinkedIn. So what I did is I pulled up your LinkedIn profile. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up on screen. Do you mind if I put you on the spot right now? No, I don't care. Yeah, you have no choice on. because I'm in the driver's seat. <laughs> So I've made changes to my profile because of you, Brenda. So yay! I'm you know, so proud. Yeah. I'm so. What did you change since we talked? Do you remember what it was? So the the banner, my back banner, banner is mm -hmm. is uh, is was not was you couldn't. It was sort of just there was nothing there. There was there I, wasn't even my name on the banner. It was nothing. Yeah. So here's what here's my advice for you when we um when we look up someone's profile LinkedIn if we want to learn more about you and we're like oh he has a podcast and I'm trying to figure out. What's the name of the podcast? Where's the link for it? So in your contact info section, yeah. if I click on that, um, you can actually put three web pages in here. So right now we've oh, nice. got your, your home page. And what I would do is um, in this box, it, you know, you can add the website link and then off to the side, it'll say, um, is it personal, website, blog, or other? And if you choose the word other, then you can type in something. And it looks like you typed in, you know, the same web address twice. So what I would do instead is um, put voiceover demos or audio narration, like describe what it is that people get when they come to your website. But then yep. actually what I would do is add your podcast link in there as well. Whatever, you know, wherever your, your main podcast is hosted, whether it's through your website or through another service, put that in there. And then in parentheses, by the way, what's the podcast about? I'm curious. The VO podcast. It's, VO, well, yeah. it's, it's all about, it's, I interview other people from within the VO industry. So primarily yeah. it's other voice okay. actors, but sometimes gotcha. I'll have a producer or an agent on. Um, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of Perfect. fun. Perfect. So, so then, you know, you know, you can, you, I, I hope, hopefully we can find other people who are interested in that too. And I'll make sure I'll drop the link in the comments below here. I want to go back to our interview and we've got a couple of additional questions. Um, I want to keep us on track here for, for ending today. Um, this person loved your tip. See about the ring light. Ring there light. You go. Above. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I was the same way when I found out about it. Yeah. And um, I, I, I want to thank you as well, Mike, for sharing your story with us. There's not, um, there's not always that direct line to success when you're self-employed, when you're an entrepreneur. And I think it's so important that we share the journey. Um, and what I heard from you is, you know, that you are also helping people who are coming after you. You're helping others come into the VO business. You're helping to provide coaching and guidance and things to them as well. And by coming on the show here today, you're you're sharing your story and you're you're helping other uh, would be entrepreneurs. Maybe you're giving them the inkling and and you gave them some nudges along the way here too. Um, Tom uh, has a question. You, Do you know yeah. Tom? Oh, yes. Tom's a good okay. friend. Yeah, I love Tom. He's a great guy. So um, talk to us about giving back and how that helps enhance your career. Yeah. And and shout out to Tom Maley, who is also a fellow voice actor and a great voice actor. So check his LinkedIn profile out as well and check out some of his demos because a uh, good friend and a great voice actor. The, um, you know, Tom and I met years ago and uh, we've been good buddies ever since. And, and I've been following his journey. And when I when I started in the VO world, I remember I didn't have a clue what to do. And I remember thinking to myself, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to document my journey. So I started to blog back when blogging was kind of just getting started. Mm -hmm. And I blogged about my experience because I thought to myself, look, if I can at least share this with people, then it's going to help somebody who's coming uh, after me. And the, uh, my good friend, Kelly Buttrick, also gave me this beautiful uh, symbol. And it, she said, think of it as the compass. She said, mm -hmm. the compass is north, south, east, and west. The north is the people that are further along in the journey than you are. Reach mm -hmm. out to them. Ask them to mentor you. Ask them questions in, you know, in a non-spammy way, but in an authentic way. And learn from them. The people to the east and west are your peers. Those are the people who are walking right. along the path with you. They're They're carrying... They're helping you as you go and you're helping them as you go. And then the people to the south or the people that are behind you or a little bit behind you in their journey, you need to reach down and or back and help them and be their north. And mm -hmm. that really stuck with me. And I, you know, I thought when I created the podcast, I'm like, who's my avatar? And I thought my avatar is me 10 years ago who didn't know what 
I was supposed to do to get started. I loved the industry, but I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to start. So every podcast episode is from that perspective, talking to myself 10 years ago, saying, I'm going to help you learn from this person that I'm interviewing, just like you're doing. And for me, giving back like that um, is incredibly rewarding. And I do a little bit of coaching. I meet with people on a regular basis. People will reach out to me and send me an email or drop me a message on LinkedIn or other social media and ask me questions. And I try to be as, as responsive as I can. And, and with the time that I have, because I know what it's like. I remember being there, being mm -hmm. that person who was reaching out to somebody, asking them questions. And so many people helped me along the way that I have an obligation to help everybody else that I can too. So it's really, really important piece of what I do. So I appreciate Tom saying that. That is a great, thank you, Tom, for asking the question. That is a great analogy to think about the compass and those people pulling yeah. you ahead, the people alongside the East and the West, and I then the it. people at South who are coming um, behind you in the path. I love that. Um, Mike, this has been a delightful conversation. I mean, we when we first had our conversation, I don't know, way back January, it was supposed to be a 15 minute phone call, lasted an hour. And you guys can see Mike's <laughs> just a great conversationalist, um, lots of great insights and tips. So Mike, Mike I wanna thank you for joining us here today. I'm gonna pull your LinkedIn back up on screen again. Are you open to accepting invitation requests from folks that are watching or what's your preference there? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Please connect with me. I'd love to. Good. And what I would recommend for folks that are watching is when you invite Mike to, to connect with you, mention that you heard him on the interview with me here today. If there's something particularly helpful, you know, share that with us as well. And I want to pop over to your website. I love your website, Mike, because it's so crystal clear in terms of like, what do I do next? And how do I, how do I use the website? And I'm going to pull this um, link on here real quick, just, just to put it up on screen so people can see this. This is MikeLentzVoice.com. You got a demo button. Um, and then there's three kind of paths to go through this website. Is that correct? The, the podcast? Yeah, those are links. Though so those will take you. One will take you to the podcast. One will take okay. you to my podcast consulting site, which I do a gotcha. lot of work with companies and individuals on their podcast, and then the Bio Success Online course that I have. So, I love it. This is such a crystal yeah. clear website, and just such great branding too. Mike, consistency with the the orange color in the background, and very clear and very easy to use. Thank so. You. On behalf, behalf of the marketing community, thank you for having good branding because there's a lot of people out there that just don't have that. Um, as we start to wrap up our conversation here today, Mike, any final comments that you want to offer our audience if they're considering making their dream career a reality at any age? Mm, yeah, I mean, I think we've talked, we've touched on so many of those points already, but I, I really think that if it, I would encourage you to, if you're not there yet, if you don't get up in the morning and say, "I love what I'm, what I'm doing." in terms of my career, life is so short and we don't know what the future holds that if you haven't found that yet, then I would encourage you, as Steve Jobs said, keep on looking, you know, and we can't connect the dots going forward. We can only connect them going backwards. So you don't necessarily know. We don't know what the future lies. The only thing you can control is what the next step is. So yeah. just take the next step, you know, get up tomorrow and say, what would I do tomorrow if I could do whatever career I wanted? And even if it's for an hour or two hours, convince yourself that that's going to happen. And then what would be the next step? And just take that next step. And then the next step will show up. So that's my advice to people to take Great. the step, even if it's a small one. Just a small one. I love it. Baby steps. Just make the small incremental steps yep. in doing that. Yep. All right. Awesome. Um, I think we kind of talked about this as well, but any anything else you're working on right now that we should be aware of? As we wrap up. Yeah, I mean, I touched on it just briefly uh, before when we were showing the, the website. A really neat piece of the pie that's really opened up for me is the podcast producing. And because as people have found out and I've had the opportunity to speak at conferences, what ends up happening is people reach out to me because a lot of people want to have a podcast, but most people don't really know how to do it, which is mm -hmm. similar to what it was like for me 10 years ago, 15 years ago in BO. So I thought, look, I'm going to, I can provide that help. I can shorten the learning curve. So I've worked with a wonderful company and the Brother 3T company and ATD. And I just had a couple of new clients come on board this week where I didn't really expect it, but because I created my own podcast and because I had the opportunity to speak at conferences, just mm -hmm. like you, Brenda, people started coming to me saying, can you help me with my podcast? And I'm right. like, I think I can. So mm -hmm. that's become a consulting arm of what I do now, um, which is 
been a lot of fun. So that's a little bit uh, somewhat so of a new addition. So is that the middle the link pie. on screen right now, yep. the podcast snap yep. you're referring to? And I'm going to click on that and that takes us to another website or another landing page yep. or something? It's a, it's a website. Okay. It's not a company. It's a website. But again, the branding is similar. As you can see, the, the orange and the and the black. And I had my great Jenny Hansen, who's my graphic designer, created the logo for me and the snapping mm-hmm. fingers, which I love. And it's it's a it's a website where you can find a little bit more about what I do in terms of podcast consulting and helping people get their podcast from concept to launch. And mm-hmm. um, it's been a it's been a lot of fun, and it's an extension of what I do because I love to do podcasting, and uh, I love to help other people help create theirs as well. So, so asking for know. a friend, Mike, if someone has a LinkedIn Live show, for example, and they've got like over yep, hundred yep. interviews, and they wanted to convert it to a um, a podcast, yep. could you help that person? I'm going to tell my friend your response. <laughs> yeah, I would have your friend call me and um, we'd set up a consultation and we would yeah. uh, be able to probably work through some of the details. Um, do you know her well? Is she a good friend? I do know <laughs> her very, very well. It is a very good friend. Um, <laughs> she's she's finishing a master class right now. And then her next goal is to convert her LinkedIn live to a podcast. And she keeps telling me this. And I'm like, well, we got to like take the first step, you know? Yeah, you so, you, you tell her that that's an excellent idea. And I think yeah. every every company and everybody, every company should should have a podcast because it's a really effective branding. And absolutely, you tell her that it would make a lot of sense to do that. And yes, I could help her. All right. Awesome. So there were a few questions we didn't get to. Um, I'm not sure what Scott was referring to when he said repeat the question, but Mike, I'll make sure that you have the LinkedIn post because there's a couple of additional um, questions we didn't get to today. We're getting a little bit late on time. Mike, I just want to say thank you so much. This was such a delight having you on here today. I learned a lot. I'm feeling inspired. I know our audience is probably feeling the same way as well. Um, Just thank you so much for being with us here today. Well, it was absolutely my pleasure. Very great to meet you and and great to, uh, I'm so thankful that you invited me on to the LinkedIn Live. This was a lot of fun. Hey, and for our audience, I want to invite you guys before you leave, if you have not left a comment yet, I would love it if you could drop a comment into chat that lets us know that this message is reaching you, whether you're watching this in live or replay. You might be watching this later on. It might be on LinkedIn. It might even be on YouTube, but still drop your comments below. We'd love to hear your feedback on there. And one final idea for you. This is a LinkedIn idea. If you have not yet posted this week or maybe even this month or this year, go ahead and as soon as the video is done, there's a share button at the bottom of it. Click on share and share the video as a post. Maybe tag Mike in the post when you do so and tell us something that inspired you or was it was interesting about the, the video. You never know who the message is going to reach. It could reach your friend, somebody who's looking at <laughs> making that um, pivot from from corporate job into a dream career. I know there's a couple of people I'm going to share this video with because I see the potential in them. And one of them just texted me right now. Actually, he's watching the video right now. So this is very exciting. Mike, thank you so much. I look forward to at some point, I'm going to make it out to New York, New Jersey. I've got to visit Kenneth, who's out there. I want to check that apothecary in person and um, nice. hopefully get the chance to meet you in person as well. That'd be great. Thanks, Brenda. All right, guys. Take care, everyone. Thank you again for watching. Have a wonderful, safe rest of the week. And I'll be back here again next Tuesday for another segment of Social Media Pie Live. Take care, everyone. Have a great week.